So in one hand I have a balloon and on my left ear I've got a burette loaded with water and of course we all know what I'm going to do because if you didn't do this as a kid then you certainly will have done it with your post-16 students looking at different liquids and seeing how their polarity affects whether or not they're being distorted, their flow is being distorted by the electric field around a balloon or some kind of a, a rod. Something that we don't do so often though is to have a look at how microwaves may interact differently with polar and non-polar materials. And this is something that chemists of course make great use of. So what we're going to be looking at this month is a similar demonstration, but this time involving a microwave. So here's my trusty microwave and all we're going to be doing is putting inside two beakers with some liquids in them. Now these liquids have been labelled up. Uh, one of them says not hot water and the other one says not hot kerosene uh, or paraffin for the UK audience. Of course that could be medicinal or fuel. Now um, the not is written in blue ink with one of these friction based pens which has a thermochromic dye in it which is going to disappear when the temperature reaches above 60 degrees. Uh, it's a similar kind of thing that helps these thermochromic mugs to work. And so the idea is whichever one of these heats up the most is obviously going to actually cause that thermochromic dye to go colourless and instead of it saying not hot water or not hot paraffin it will just say hot water or hot paraffin. So we'll pop these in here. Okay, there we go. And there we go. And I'm going to put these on for about a minute. Okay. Now, while these are going round, uh, I often ask my students to predict what's going to happen, of course, before they actually see what's going on. They're, they're going in there for a minute, and the usual response is, you've got to be crazy. You're sticking effectively petrol, which is the way that most of them see it, uh, in a microwave. Uh, this sort of flammable substance, they think it's going to be very dangerous for me to in a microwave. Uh, of course, that's not actually the case. So as we take these out after a minute, what we should find is that the water, being polar, has heated up uh, or been able to absorb the uh, microwaves a lot more effectively than the kerosene, which actually remains completely at room temperature. Now, you can of course pass around the beakers for the students to examine. It's most dramatic when they can feel these, uh, but it's also useful to have something visual, which is where this sort of thermochromic pen comes in handy. So, we'll need to leave this for about another 30 seconds or so, uh, just to finish off. Right, so, let's see what's happening. Okay, so a little bit of steam being released there, suggesting that something certainly heated up a little bit. And here we go. So, as you can see, we now have some uh, not hot kerosene still. In fact, that's still totally at room temperature and some hot water. Okay, that's actually uh, particularly hot there. Uh, and the thermochromic dye has done its job by going completely colorless. And of course, you can potentially sort of pour these into these kind of mugs, which are uh, unfortunately labelled as being not microwave safe. So give it a go yourself. Microwave yourself up some water and some kerosene.